Oh, Lord Jesus, your love is great. Your love is deep. Your love is rich. Your love for your own is a permanent love. We want to remember you today for the love that you had for us that led you to give your life for us. Lord, I pray that you would help us to do that well. So I pray that you would grant us your spirit. You would grant us ears to hear, eyes to see. And I pray it in your name, dear Jesus. Amen. As we come to our time around the Lord's table, we're going to be looking at a passage that explains to us exactly who Jesus is. And our testimony today comes from demons. So if you have your Bible with you, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 8? We're going to be looking at verses 28 to 32 together. If you don't actually have a Bible, some men are going to be coming down the aisles. Just raise your hand and they'll get a copy of God's word to you. If you don't actually own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting here in Matthew 8 is that Jesus has just finished teaching the Sermon on the Mount, and he's performed a series of miracles immediately following to that. He has healed a man of leprosy. He has healed the centurion's servant. He has healed Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. And then he calmed the storm as he was traveling across the Sea of Galilee in a small boat. And all of these miracles testify that Jesus has authority over the natural things of this world. But our testimony today is the testimony of demons. And they know something about Jesus that is not revealed in the earlier miracles that I just mentioned. So as we read our passage... Let's be looking for evidence that Jesus also has authority over the supernatural. And let's allow that to inform our thinking as we remember Jesus today. So reading verses 28 and 32 together. When he came to the other side of the country of the Gadarenes, two men who are demon-possessed met him, and they were coming out of the tombs, and they were so extremely violent that no one could pass by that way. And they cried out, saying, What business do we have with each other, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now there was a herd of many swine feeding at a distance from them. The demons began to entreat him, saying, If you are going to cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. And they came out and went into the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the waters. What we can see in verse 28 is the destructive influence and nature of these demons. There were two men, and these men were possessed by these demons. And these men were so extremely violent that no one could pass by that way. Mark and Luke also, in their gospel accounts, relate this story to us. And they tell us things that are very helpful for us to understand as we, we look at our passage here today. They tell us that this man would be bound in chains and he was so powerful and so strong that he could break those chains and the shackles that bound his, his hands and his feet. They told him in their account of this that this man had no capacity for self-control. He was constantly screaming day and night. Their accounts also tell us that the demon possession of this man had robbed him of all sense of dignity. He had not been wearing any clothing for a long period of time and many demons had entered into him. So what we're looking at here is a situation in which this person and these two men were completely under the control of demons. And that's very important for us to understand as we keep in mind as we look at verse 29 and following. Because up to this point, the demons had been given free access to this man. But when they see Jesus, they know that they have encountered the one who has ult ultimate authority over all things, all things. They see Jesus and they cry out and they say, what business do we have with each other, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? This tells us that the demons understand two things about Jesus and they understand them very well. The first is that they know exactly who Jesus is. They refer to him, the son of God. They know he's the Messiah, they know he's the coming king, and they know that he is coming to establish his rule and his reign on this earth. But they also know something else and we see it at the end of the verse. They make reference to the time. This reference to the time tells us that they understand that Jesus is the judge. They know that a day is coming in which Jesus will judge them and he will find them guilty 
and he will assign them a place in an eternal lake of fire. Later in his gospel account in Matthew 25, Matthew writes that this lake of fire has been prepared for the devil and for his angels. Jesus is showing us in this, ex in this exchange that he is the master over the supernatural as well as over the natural. There's absolutely nothing that is out from under his control. And Jesus proves that in the next three verses. Luke's account tells us that Jesus has already commanded the demons to come out of this man. But the demons are bent on doing one thing, and that is the destruction of whatever it is that Jesus has created. But at the same time, they know that ultimately they're under Jesus' authority and that they must obey him. So they ask permission to enter into a large herd of nearby pigs. And with one simple word, Jesus instructs them and he says, go. And that's exactly what they do. They leave the man, they enter into the pigs, and they take those pigs straight to their death. The takeaway here is, is not really about what the demons do to the pigs. Rather, it's that Jesus rules over the supernatural. And what the demons did to the pigs helps us understand that these demons were forced to obey Jesus and that he does indeed rule over the supernatural when he commanded them to come out of the man. And the way that relates to us this morning is that because Jesus rules over the supernatural, he is able to rescue the sinner from the power that their sin has over them. Jesus is able to rescue the sinner from the power that their sin has over them. And he did this by offering himself as an atoning sacrifice in their place in God's system of justice. He went to a cross and he took upon himself the sin of all of those who would trust him as their savior and Lord. And there on that cross, Jesus satisfied in his own body God's wrath that is the just response of a holy God to the sin that offends him. So if you're here this morning and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, we invite you, we urge you to join with us in taking the elements. When they come to you, remember what Jesus did to rescue you from the power that sin had over you before you knew him. And when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you don't know Jesus as your personal savior and Lord, if he is not your master, if, you're not, if your life is not characterized by loving him and following him and obeying him, I wanna help you understand that scripture tells you that in your present condition, you are still held captive by Satan to do his will. That's 2 Timothy 2, 25. And his will is destructive to you. It will always and it will only harm you. And his will is that you reject the only one that can rescue you from the power and the penalty of your sin. But the good news is the gospel message. And the gospel message is that Jesus has authority over that supernatural as well as the natural. And he alone is able to rescue you from the power and the penalty of your sin. Communion is an opportunity for Christians to remember what Christ has done for them, to free them from the power and the penalty of their sin. So when the elements come to you, simply take them and pass them and use this opportunity to consider the truth of Jesus and who he is. There's an info table up by the front door. I'll be there after the service. Uh, you can talk to any one of the other elders or even the person in the row next to you. Uh, any one of us would love to talk to you about what it looks like to take Jesus as your personal savior and Lord. So men, come and serve us, and then I'll return to pray.